Kai Jun, former Gamecock, uh, safety, uh, Spurs up, GC for life. I have my brother here, cousin, Rodney Kinlaw. Rodney Kinlaw, like you said, Penn State University, running back uh, under the tutelage of Mr. Joe Paterno. We are. <laughs> and then I want to give a shout out, show some love to uh, Mr. Jonathan Allen, uh, the visionary, the guy that put this together, the mastermind behind bringing this show together and bringing this crew together. Uh, once again, welcome you to the PCP, Palmetto Crew Podcast. Um, before we get started, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe. You can follow us on social media uh, at the media platforms. Uh, Mr. Kenlaw will tell you about those. Yeah, you can find us on Twitter <coughs> at Palmetto Crew, YouTube at Palmetto Crew, and on uh, email. You can email us at palmettocrew at gmail.com. Send us any questions, any suggestions, anything you'd like to hear, uh, anything you want, want us to talk about, just send it to us and we'll cover it for you. All right. And uh, once again, follow us on that social media. Uh, we're here for the people. So the Palmetto Crew Podcast. So we'll be talking about a gambit of things. So we'll be talking about youth sports. Uh, we were talking about college sports, professional sports. We were talking about basketball, soccer, softball, um, anything you can think of, any trending topics, what's going on. We'll be talking about life in general, um, what we're thinking about, what's going on, past experiences, some great storytelling. We'll have some guests. Uh, from time to time as well in studio and zooming in with us uh so we are here uh palmetto crew podcast pcp um so we'll go ahead and jump into it once again event stream uh is sponsoring this show mr jonathan allen myself gerard june rodney kenlaw uh so how you feeling today cuzzo I'm, I'm feeling good feeling good just uh just ready to get it started talk about things that happened this week uh lost some legends and some very close to me especially playing the same position as me and just reflecting, had a good week. We're here today, here with you, here with Mr. Allen. So I was having a good time. We're ready to just talk about how we usually do, just chopping it up, talking about what we do every day. You know how wives be on us. So y'all text all, y'all might, might as well marry each other. So we might as well, like we did, we started, started a podcast. So we can do like how we do, just talk and just share with everyone what we talk about. Yep, definitely glad to be here. Um, like Rodney said, so we lost some legends, uh, Miss, Miss uh, Tina Turner. Um, once again in the entertainment industry um, we lost her here um, so unfortunate news there um, great career some legendary songs uh, we're both 80s babies so didn't grow up in that generation but definitely know about Tina Turner and uh, her status and what she left behind and uh, just her influence on the music industry as a whole um, and then we want to talk about Mr. Jim Brown um, so all respect to him uh, the OG um, you know, Cleveland Brown, everybody knows about Jim Brown. Once again, 80s babies. Um, you know, we didn't get to see him play live, of course. Uh, we heard a lot about him from our fathers, uh, from our uncles, and, you know, the older older guys in the neighborhood. So, um, Ron, just want to kind of get your intake on far as, uh, you know, uh, Jim Brown, what he meant to you as a former running back and his legacy. Uh, you know, what, what did Jim Brown mean to you? Well, I'm gonna start with <clears throat> Tina Turner just because you know, the 80s babies, I didn't really know about Tina Turner and Tina Turner until I saw the movie. What's love got to do with it? You know how we be joking off, of, especially of that movie, and just we, I didn't really know about her, but just hearing her music and seeing how she was with Ike, this I don't know how true the movie is, but it was entertaining and it was sad, and but it, it, it made it brought light to her and who she was to me, and just started listening to the music. Uh, so. That's why what I know her from, even though maybe yeah. baby, I didn't grow up listening to her. But she has great music, legendary voice, and even the part uh, Angela Bassett played as playing her yeah. that was extraordinary as well. Yeah, yeah, and like you said, I don't know how true it is with Ike, <laughs> uh, but you know, eat uh, the cake anime. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and one of the favorite parts, uh, you know, when Ike was in the courtroom, <laughs> I, I had the shades on it. <laughs> And, and the judge told Ike, right, you know, the, the, can you please instruct your client to remove his sunglasses in my courtroom? <laughs> I said, you you have to instruct me to do nothing, Mr. Judge. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know, you know, how, how, how accurate the movie was. But once again, uh, you know, what's love got to do with it? Rolling on the river, uh, you know, regardless of their situation, they left a lot of music behind. Um, so definitely Tina Turner uh, was, was a special individual. Uh, and, you know, a lot of the, the music artists today definitely uh, followed behind her and, and the legacy she left behind. So, um, you know, rest in peace, uh, Miss Tina Turner. Um, and just thank you for the music that you left us with and, and the legacy that you left behind. Yeah. 
Yep, yep. Now we're gonna touch Mr. Jim Brown. <laughs> Jim, I, I, he's not my favorite running back. I think I do think he he is not just because of football, but he is the best running back ever because of what he did outside of football, especially <clears throat> being a social activist and just the way he led his life. But football running back for me, you know, is Barry Sanders. So the reason I changed my number my senior year, but. But Jim Brown just losing that legend, just seeing what he did, especially during the time that he did it. And like I said, not just about the football, but even him stepping away from the game and just having that courage. And even somebody like me who didn't make it to that level and to be at the pinnacle of that, in that position and be at the top of your game and just walk away because yeah. your morals meant that, that much more to you. And a lot of people, especially these days, people won't, won't do that. It's all about the dollars, all about the money and how much you can do and the fame and popularity and he wasn't about any of that. So that was the thing that was stood about him and just that era and the size, the speed and he just he changed the he changed the game of football and even think of how long even black men had a chance to play football. So yeah. that was the, the early sixties and it's changed now, but he was one of the the, the the stars of it. So and just him being that great and what he did and I think it was what, nine seasons. Yeah, he played yeah. nine years. Yeah. It nine years, yeah. So eight of those years he was basically the, the best football player, not only the running back, the best football player in the league and you think about what he did at Syracuse, you know, Ernie Davis. Yeah. Uh, you know, we saw the movie The Express and the guys that came behind him. So, um, you know, Jim Brown, the, the you know, we talked about the, the, the social side of it, you know, the, the Cleveland Summit, for those of you who are not familiar with it. So, you know, when Ali didn't want to go to Vietnam, you know, he stood up and got with those guys and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and, you know, these athletes, they really stood up and, uh, you know, didn't let a paycheck define, you know, what they stood for. So. At the end of the day, um, you know, Jim Brown had an impact on and off the field. He was an actor. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we saw some of the some of the old uh, Richard Pryor stand-ups, yeah. you know, where, you know, Richard Pryor, you know, he had his drug issues and everything, and, and Jim Brown got involved with that, you know, and said, if you want me as a friend, <laughs> you know, you got to step away from that stuff. So Jim Brown definitely changed, changed the world. You know, he changed that organization. And he left the Cleveland Browns in a better place than it was, and the world a better place than it was, um, you know, before, you know, Jim Brown or Mr. Brown uh, became the, the Cleveland Browns running back. So um, much respect to, to Mr. Jim Brown. Um, like we said, you know, we see the highlight tapes, you know, yeah. we see how he ran through people. And, you know, just to be honest, I think he could play in any era. You know, we talk about different eras of football players, but, you know, that combination of size and speed and physicality and just the man that he was and the individual that he was. He wasn't perfect. You know, he had some issues as well, as we all do, but um, he, he definitely made last an impact. Brown, what'd you expect? <laughs> <laughs> but he definitely made an impact. And, uh, you know, uh, once again, rest in peace, Mr. Brown. Um, gone but not forgotten. Um, good thing is he got to have his Hall of Fame. Yeah. You know, while he was still here, he got to see that and, and knows what, what he means to the game, to the NFL. Um, you know, the younger players were able to interact with him. Uh, so definitely uh, rest in peace, uh, Mr. Jim Brown. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you about who your favorite <clears throat> running back is, just because I know who your team is. But I also want to say rest in peace to Franco Harris, a fellow uh, Penn Stater. And just I remember Franco coming back to the campus and telling stories about the immaculate catch. I remember he told that story, and that was he was saying it was because of Joe. All the time, Joe would say, run to the ball, don't walk, run mm-hmm. to the ball, always follow, run to the ball, make sure you hustle, make sure you hustle. And he was, uh, and when that happened, it was always, Joe was always in his mind. And when that time happened, he was following the ball. He was just yeah. at the right place at the right time for hustling. So he yeah. did, I remember he did come back and talk about that. So just rest in peace to that uh, legend as well, Mr. Yeah. Franco Harris from Penn State. And thank you for all that you did for Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and just being the man that you were as well. So, yeah. So now we're going to go back to your favorite running back. I know who your team is. I hope you don't say that's your favorite running back. So uh, I'm a Cowboys fan. Um, so uh, Emmitt Smith, great running back, um, but not my favorite running back. Um, okay, so you got a little you know, sense. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it, there's debate out there. You so know, you're not a did, crazy Cowboys fan, what you're saying? Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a real, I'm a real Cowboy fan, but I'm a real football fan first. So. I don't know about that. We, I, like, I see you every year talking about these Super Bowl <laughs> Oh, we've been, Super, we've been in the Super Bowl next year. See, so there you go. Look. There you go. <laughs> but uh, Emma Smith was was fortunate to have some great offensive linemen. Uh, but once again, you can't, you can't coach the vision the balance, the footwork that he had. Um, but I'm going to probably go with uh, Bo Jackson um, just because of the, the athlete that he was. Um, you know, he played multiple sports. 
um, fast, powerful, vision. Um, he just had the total package. So I'm going to probably go with Bo Jackson. Barry Sanders as well. Um, human highlight reel. Uh, he didn't have an office in line, so he, he made things happen on his own. So, But, uh, but yeah, I, I can be real and not be biased. Uh, okay. So Cowboy fan, but I can say that Emmitt Smith is probably not my best. My favorite running back. I'm just, just making sure. I get, <laughs> I do give him his credit. It's not his fault he had the best line in the yeah. game. So if, I wouldn't. I, I don't know a running back that wouldn't want to run behind the best line. So I give him that. So yeah. I can't fault him for for staying behind the best line for so long. Yeah. yeah. And you also can't take away any. And we say, we say uh, Barry. We say Jim. Yeah. We can't forget Walter Payton. Like yeah. Walter Payton, just what he did as well. And. <laughs> He left us early as well, and that was my idol growing up. Even though, like, I, I got older, I started watching Barry and the, the flashiness. But Walter, that grind, the hard work he put in, that's really instilled in me. I remember even before every game, he, uh, my dad, when I was young, he gave me a highlight tape, and I watched, I watched every before every high school game, I watched Walter Payton's game. It's like I just can envision it being that emboldening that body, but just doing what he was doing. When I got in the field, sometimes some of those movements, I felt that same motion. So, yeah. so rest in peace <laughs> of sweetness as well. So one, yep. one of my favorites as well, just not the best. Yeah. So let's 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 change it up a little bit. Let's let's talk about college football. So favorite college running back uh, that 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 you seen play. So not not the you know the the other eras, but the favorite college running back because I got a name I'm gonna put out there. The best college running back that you ever seen. I would say that I seen play. Oh, that's that's a hard one. It's it's it's, it's, it's a few of them. Reggie Bush. Bush Bush is up there. <laughs> Bush is up there. Reggie Bush. I'm I'm and gonna I, say. I, but I, I still say Barry because what Barry did. Even though I yeah, didn't see Barry, yeah. I watched the highlight just those yeah. numbers. And I think with him between him. I would say Barry. I would say he's my favorite, but even I would say Barry, say Barkley. Yeah. You watch Marshall Falk. He was an animal. Yeah. And I didn't see a lot of uh, what's his name? Just slipped my mind. Vikings. Adrian, Adrian Peterson. Peterson he's, a, he's a different breed yeah. as well. So his freshman year was crazy. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But there's a lot of great college running backs. But I would say best still for me would be Barry. Yeah. And I haven't had to argue a lot of people about him and, and Reggie Bush. And he's like, well, Barry couldn't catch. I'm like, he didn't need to. Yeah. You remember to yeah, over 2,000 yeah. yards? Yeah. And yeah. in college, you don't, need to, you don't need to catch the ball. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. so, But, yeah, so, uh, you know, just, just a little spill on the running back. Once again, this this came off of, uh, you know, Mr. Brown. Um, unfortunate that, that he passed away, but he lived a, a, a great life. Um, and, you know, I thought about uh, a quote that I heard. Uh, Shane Beamer actually said it. Shout out once again to the Gamecocks, but then I heard it again last weekend at church as well. So it says, uh, "If your if your presence is not uh, if your presence doesn't make an impact, your absence will go unnoticed." Mm -hmm. So Jim Brown was definitely one of those guys that he came in and his presence made an impact. And now that he's gone, everybody realizes how important he was and the impact that he made while he was here. So. Um, once again, all due respect, um, the OG, Mr. Brown. Yeah. Um, so we'll, uh, we, we'll transition a little bit. Um, so once again, we are both from the state of South Carolina. Um, so we had a major event um, this past uh, weekend, last Saturday in the state of South Carolina. So uh, we'll have this segment called Hometown Hero, uh, where we'll kind of reminisce or talk about you know, the legends or the guys from back home that we were able to see play that we maybe grew up with, that we interacted with. So um, I'll pass it all to, to my co-host here. But back in South Carolina, they had a, a very important uh, Hall of Fame induction where some players got inducted into the South Carolina Hall of Fame. And uh, Ron, if you could speak on that as far as what happened uh, this past Saturday. We, we did have some legends get inducted. I'm going to start with our cousin, our hometown hero, Mr. <laughs> Joe Hamilton from Georgia Tech. Run up for the Heisman, which he should have won. <laughs> Ron Dane, come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but just, I remember just even watching grow, uh, Joe growing up at Macedonia. I remember we go to the high school games, him, Courtney, Pearson. Pearson played 12 years in the league. Courtney, my uncle, number one draft pick. Mm -hmm. Joe, just all that talent in the area, just watching them grow up and just seeing how they work. It, it made it, it, for me, it made it seem possible. Mm -hmm. So seeing them be able to do it and – I was like, if they can do it, I can do it. I see them every day, and, and just mm -hmm. the, even the words they've spoken to us growing up. Just watch them in the backyard, or behind the barbershop, playing football, and they just they the, the grind they had, and they, they just they it's like they had a dream, and they just, and nothing could stop them. Mm -hmm. 
and just even the size Joe had. Like they wanted everybody else wanted him to play cornerback. He came in playing quarterback and broke breaking records and look what he did. Yeah. yeah and then even like uh, another legend, a Hall of Famer, Mr. Woodrow Danzler. And he was a cowboy, but I remember watching him, just his athletic ability. <clears throat> he could have been a running back, kick return. Yeah, he was great players. Jermaine O'Neal. Yeah. I saw him in high school. Remember I don't know. If I, I don't know if a lot of people know about Courtney playing basketball. Courtney's one of the greatest basketball, best basketball players in South Carolina, and he was a uh, was a, it wasn't a shrine, but the North was it North South? That's what they called it. I think it was. It was in yeah. Columbia. I remember he was there with Jermaine O'Neal, and Jermaine went straight to the NBA, and Courtney was there playing center, and just that athletic ability. Just seeing Jermaine in high school, the way he just the way he was, and it was just you could tell he was just different. So. Yeah. Yeah. Just watching, I'm really glad the way they represent in South Carolina, and just we have so many legends, and people always talk about the Georgia. Oh, I hear it all the time, they, they forget about South Carolina, <laughs> and one of their favorite players is from South Carolina, AJ Green, you yeah. know, the University of Georgia. Exactly. We talk about Georgia, Florida, California. A lot of times they leave out South Carolina. We had a lot of number one picks, Courtney, uh, Clowney. Yep. So we got some good guys to come through. So yep. Uh, how do you feel about them getting inducted into the Hall of Fame and yeah, just so it, getting recognized for their accomplishments? Yeah, it was, it was definitely special. Uh, so you know, like you said, we we grew up, you know, throwing throwing the little plastic footballs on on the sideline at Macedonia High School, watching Joe play. Um, so you know, that was definitely uh, special. So we we always felt is you know wherever Joe was at or what he was doing, we were always part of that. So mm. he definitely represented. Um, shout out to Alvin, Alvin, South Carolina, uh, Berkeley County, Low Country. Bunno. Um, so Bunno, yep, 843. So a lot of people don't know what Bunno is. Uh, you won't find it on the map. So you got you to gotta know somebody from there or live there or whatever. But definitely shout out to everyone back home. But, yeah, to us, you know, Joe Joe was was almost like a god to us. So, yeah. you know, we looked up to him, um, you know, and, you know, we started. I didn't know about Georgia Tech and, you mm. know, these schools until we started hearing about the recruitment and the things that were going on. So, um, and then Woodrow Danzler, you know, shout out to Orangeburg Wilkinson, um, upstate. So a um, little exposure. We played against him a little bit in basketball and football. But, um, you know, those guys were, were definitely special. So, um, you know, I played quarterback in high school, and I always wanted to be the, the Woodrow Danzler slash Joe Hamilton slash Mike <laughs> Vick. So, uh, but, yeah, those guys uh, definitely um, legends in the state of South Carolina. Um, congratulations to them. Um, you know, you guys represented the state. Um, in a great way, um, you know, always hear positive things, um, still doing good things. And, uh, you know, just to kind of kind of sidetrack, so, you know, Event Stream Sports, once again, uh, who was putting on the, the PCP, um, Palmetto Crew Podcast. So we actually did the camp at uh, Lawrenceville uh, Rec- Recreation Center uh, last year. So, and Woodrow Danzler uh, was part of that camp. So I uh, actually got a chance to interact with him and speak with him and, you know, that was huge for me because I got to actually talk to him. Mm-hmm. When I was in high school, I went to the Clemson camp. Okay. And Woodrow Danza was playing quarterback, and that was the first time I met him. So, yeah. And, you know, we talked about the camp and, you know, talked about high school and had a good conversation. So, uh, of course, he's an ex-cowboy, so we talked about that a little bit. So, uh, but but real nice guy, um, good opportunity to meet him and catch up with him. Um, so definitely proud of the South Carolina Hall of Famers and, uh, you know, putting South Carolina on the map. And like you said, South Carolina – Per capita is smaller than yeah. Florida, you know, California, Georgia, um, and you know have a lot of a lot of famous players, a lot of popular players. Um, Just had Quinn that went for yeah. Bowl. So Robert, Robert Quinn, Quinn. Uh, Stephon Gilmore, uh, Raquel alone, Cordell Patterson with the Falcons right now. So Dunlap, uh, Carlos, Dun- Dunlap. Carlos Dunlap. So definitely a lot of talent coming out of the state of South Carolina, um, and good to see those guys being recognized um, and just you know bringing more recognition to the state of South Carolina. So. Um, you know, we're both, you know, in Georgia now, but once again, we're South Carolinians and we're going to always represent South Carolina to the fullest. So, yep. 843 forever. Yeah. So, uh, staying on South Carolina, yep. what, what you think about our, our Mr. Sumter, South Carolina, Mr. John Moran, what's going on, going on with him? We all, South Carolina, this country, like, we, yeah, yeah. we like, hey, you, you, it's hard to fake, are you city? Like, it's hard yeah. to fake that in South Carolina. Like, you from the country, like, mm-hmm. what, what do you, what do you, do you think it's just his age or think, than mm-hmm. him trying to fit in or him just being himself and should he be should he not be able to be his age he is young he's not yeah. he's not in his 30s 40s he's not he's not a veteran he's only been in the league a few years and should you scold him and, and should he have that much pressure on him at that age yeah and you got that much money so you should or you shouldn't so it's like it's, it's kind of like <laughs> should your money the how much money you make 
make you mature faster? Is should that responsibility be on you because people put you on a pedestal? Well, just because it's something you can do. Yeah. So my take on it, once again, John Morant, excellent player, very smart young man. You listen to him talk, his interviews. Um, you know, he has a daughter, of course. Um, has a father in the household. His dad is always there with him, one of his biggest supporters. So. My take on it is just, you know, you got to be careful of who your circle is. Mm-hmm. Um, you got to you got to be careful of who your circle is. And then, you know, I, my take on it, part of it, you know, you go to college, you go to high school, you, you're you the most popular person at high school. You can do whatever you want to do. You can get away with whatever you want to get with. You go to college, it's the same thing. Yeah. You know, they treat you like a king when you come on campus. You can do what you want to do. Everything is yes. Everything is, you know, what do you want? What do you want to do? Mm-hmm. This and that. And then the goal is to get to the bag, right? Yeah. Get to the bag. Get to the money. So now you go to the NBA. You got the bag. You got the money. But part of it is, from my opinion, you have to learn how to manage that money, manage that responsibility. And then also you have to mature at that point. So once you make it to that point, you know, whatever decisions you make is up to you. So a lot of people say he didn't do anything illegal. He didn't, mm-hmm. right? He is nothing illegal with having a gun. But I've heard uh I've heard this, you know, once again another quote I heard, but don't let your freedoms be your handcuffs. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you can go out and get your face tatted up, and get mm-hmm. your 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 ring, your, you know, air ring in your nose and your ears and do all of this stuff, but have you ever seen any lawyers with tattoos on their faces? You know, so mm-hmm. you got to think about things like that. So the decisions that you make, you there's always going to be a consequence and a repercussion or a result to that decision that you make. So with him riding around in the gun in the car, you didn't do anything illegal, mm-hmm. but you got to realize you the face of Powerade, you the face of Nike, you the face of the Memphis Grizzlies. Then you talk about all the gun violence and everything going on in the country right now. It's just not a good look. Mm-hmm. So you got to think about that and you got to realize that the decisions you make and the people you have around you, you want them to be your biggest fans, but you also have to be careful that these people are not encouraging things yeah. to push you to do things that once again are going to cause you to lose the bag. But the thing is, what if, they, what if he, what if that's just him, but what if he, the people around him ain't influencing him? That's who he want to be. Maybe and it's should, should he not be himself because yeah. he a millionaire because he got these deals? Should he not... Cause he, like you said, he ain't do nothing illegal. That's him being yeah, himself. Yeah. Should he not do? Should he not do that? Not yeah. be himself? Well, that's you, how you feel. Well, well, you can be yourself, but you can be yourself back in South Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> but should I penalize so, him for being his, being himself, even so, if he ain't do nothing illegal? But you, but you have to realize once again that you're working for a billion dollar corporation. So John Morant represents the Memphis Grizzlies. But they have political so. people that's out here on yep. on doing advertisements with guns, stuff like that yep. flashing. They, yep. they ain't playing rap music and they ain't got dreads. But that's yep. that's the difference. Yep, yep. That's and why it stands out more. I mean, it feels it feels different because he's doing it. Yep, yep. And I and I get that side of it. And I mean, it's the world we live in. You know, it's yeah. it's it's the world we live in, and you just have to be conscious of of what's going on. And once again, those folks that are with him. You can be yourself, mm-hmm. but you can be yourself. What are you? What are you sacrificing by being yourself? And then once again, you've made it. Yeah. You know the whole purpose is to make it. So I I, I don't know. I know of something, but I don't know a lot about something. Mm-hmm. But you know he's made it out. You're you're successful. You've made it out of the neighborhood. You've made it out of that environment. So why put yourself back in that? Well, you can that, still be maybe... real, and and be yourself. And be that job Morant that everybody knows, but you have to you have to hold yourself at a higher standard now because now you're worth millions. You're worth millions, and those folks that are with you have to respect that as well. And I feel like part of that problem is at first I was thinking it was the circle, mm-hmm. but now that this has happened again, and mm-hmm. we keep hearing about this, like you said, you got to look at the mirror now. Yeah. <laughs> so you know what they say: once you get money. That so makes you, you really more yeah. of who you really are. Yeah. So you just have to think about that. And okay, if this is who I really am, what changes, what adjustments do I need to make in the way I'm living my lifestyle and the things that I do to make sure that I can protect my legacy? And yeah. when John Moran is done playing, 
I want to talk about John Morant the way we talked about Emmitt Smith and mm. Joe Hamilton and Woodrow Dansler and Jermaine O'Neal and Jim Brown. You know, oh, yeah. I want to talk about them like those guys. We so. want to be. We also got to think, uh, understand it's a different time and era now. Mm. We don't know what Jordan and Bo Jackson yeah. and Barry Sanders did in the <laughs> 90s. We didn't have social media like we did. Yeah. Now he got caught because he was on live and his, his friend was filming it and he got caught. Yeah. But back in the days, the same guys can be doing the same thing. But nobody just saw it. So, yeah. He's being. I think he's. I think he's being himself. He's being young, but he has to also understand. Like it's not. You're not representing. You're. You're representing something bigger than you. The whole. The organization. So you, it's like you're. You're, you're the face of organization. So yeah. you have. You have to change. It's hard to say to change who you are because you want to be who you are and not change yourself. But you have to. You have, it's, it's a balance to it. Yeah. So. Yeah. But be who you are. But be who you are off camera. Right. Yeah. So Gilbert Arenas. Yeah, got to learn from that. Plaxico Burris, yeah, you got to learn from that. So you know, and LeBron, LeBron didn't go to college, right? Mm. LeBron came straight out of high school. We've never heard anything about LeBron James, right? Yeah. Not even a parking ticket, right? LeBron James has never done anything to disgrace the Cleveland Browns, the Miami Heat, the Los Angeles Lakers. So he's always been responsible and handled that way. So I feel like part of the problem is too. You have to have leaders in that locker room and you have to have people around you that are going to tell you like hey like you need to calm down you mm-hmm. don't need to be doing this and not to knock his dad but i hadn't heard anything from his dad the past three four months right yeah so you know you got to be there through the good and the bad mm-hmm. and you know you can't be a friend you got to be a father yeah. so um you know he's 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 always been there he's been a supporter you know, from from what I've seen, excellent dad, excellent man. You know, but you know, I think he just needs to calm down. And my biggest thing now is just the off season. Mm-hmm. So these two incidents happen during the season. <laughs> yeah. So now you got time. now you got free time. <laughs> now you still hanging with these guys. Now you going to Miami. Now you yeah. going out of the country. Now you doing this. So whatever you gonna do, turn the phone off. First of all, yeah. you know, be responsible, but learn from it. Learn from your mistakes. Definitely, you know we in the in the cancer culture now. Mm-hmm. But I mean, he he's a, he's a great guy, a great father. So I think he'll recover from it. Um, but just just learn from it, and you got to look yourself in the mirror, and you gotta you gotta check your circle because everybody who's with you from day one is not gonna be there at the end. Yeah. So you gotta have people that hold you accountable. Um, you know, we do it to each other. You yeah. know, like hey. You know, you might not need to go there. You yeah. know, you might might need. It's time to go home. Yeah, you know, fishy in <laughs> yeah, it's on no the yeah, energy yeah, yeah. off. So yeah, so <laughs> you gotta have people that that's willing to do that, and not a, not a lot of yes men around you. But mm. at some point, you gotta be that person too to know that okay, if if these folks, maybe it's not them, maybe it's me. Mm-hmm. So, but uh, you know, it's I, I think it'll it'll work itself out, and I, I think you'll be okay. Yeah. And yeah. speaking of yes, man, it's hard not to be a somebody to be around somebody that say you got two hundred million and you ain't got nothing. So somebody <laughs> he telling you to do something, what you gonna tell him? Yeah. You ain't got nothing. So it's hard <laughs> to give somebody advice to try to lead them the right way, unless that's your, unless that person has that respect for you. Yeah. So unless they, unless they have that respect for you, they'll listen to you. But if you just somebody like what you telling me, like I got yeah. two hundred million dollars. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and so. then I I think the the word you just threw out respect versus loyalty. Yeah. So. If I respect you, and I respect what you have, I respect your profession, I respect your family. Yeah, I'm gonna make sure that you don't do anything to jeopardize those parts of your life. Exactly. If I'm loyal to you, do whatever, then whatever you say. I'm gonna do whatever <laughs> you say, right? Yeah. So that that brings up two things. So you gotta have both of those. So once again, you gotta have people around you that respect you, respect what you have, respect what you're trying to do. And then once again, you have to have people that are not loyal to you to a fault. Yeah. So, um, you know, you don't need a lot of, you don't need a fan club. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, you got millions of fans. Yeah. You need those people around you to make sure that, like, once again, you you protect the bag, you protect what you've built, you protect your brand, you protect your name, and make sure that you continue to grow that. And, you know, like I said, he he's young in his career, so um, he, he'll be okay, but, um, you know, Fellow South Carolinian, yeah. Sumter, South Carolina. So played with a bunch of guys from Sumter. So um, you know he he'll be all right. Uh, and, you know just just be responsible. 
And I just want to say this is just our opinion. Y'all don't be coming at us because our opinion is how we feel about your situation. <laughs> and I also like sometimes the media, you know how the media is too. And me even seeing certain stuff, even the whole Penn State scandal and how the media plays certain things. And I was like, ah. Oh. So you got to think sometimes like they playing it like Jaws, this type of person. Yeah. Also, and maybe the media is trying to make it a certain way also. Yeah. So sometimes like we say and we sit and we see things on TV and we comment about it. So I say we, we comment about what we see. We don't comment about what we we don't know the 100% truth. We only can comment what we see that they show us also. Yeah. So, so yeah. we never know, like, the whole scenario behind it, under any of that. So you just yeah. never know. They, they control the narrative. Yeah. They control the narrative. So we got to keep that in mind as well. So we speak yeah. our opinion, but we speak our opinion based on what we think we know. Yeah. So like that. So. Yep. So, um, and just to move on, more of a positive note, just uh, congratulations to the new grads this year, yep. especially the – the, college, the uh, kids going to play college football, especially if you got a scholarship or if you just going on as a walk, anything. Just let's, let's I guess let's talk about that. Just yeah. going on because we had two different experiences talking about when you on that first day and how you show up and yeah. how, how it is and what you need to kind of do to adjust. And I don't know. Sometimes I feel as though my information might be a little outdated. So it's been, it's been <laughs> it's about twenty years. So. <laughs> yeah. So uh, once again, congrats to the class of twenty twenty three. So. Um, like like uh, like Cuzzo said, so we had we had two different experiences. So I actually went on. I started off as a walk on and then finished as a scholarship athlete uh, my last two years. But so my my experience coming into the University of South Carolina was different than yours. So you know you were you were highly recruited. You came in. So just talk about from from your perspective. You know what was that experience like transitioning from being you know the the top player. You know, Shrine Bowl, you know, one of the best running backs in the state going up to Penn State. What was that transition like? I would say it's like you see in the, in the movies. Like you see, like, when they say, oh, the coach love you in high school. You get up there, they don't know who you are. <laughs> so it's like a high school. Like, they, they, they're on on you. Like, it was great seeing even Joe Paterno coming down recruiting me and just having that the, the, talent, the ability to go to play at Penn State and just being accepted to a school like that. And I remember just getting to campus and just knowing how – when you're there, it's Penn State, so you you're not the best. You're not the best. Everyone everyone's the best. So you, you have to you have to change your level the way you compete. And I remember even our for the first time we worked out, and I was like, I remember I threw up. I was with a trash can hanging over, and they was like, "You okay?" And I was like, "I think I might have asthma." So I remember I went to the team doctor. He checked me out. He's like, "Nah." You got no asthma. You just, uh, I know what it is. He's like, you 52 weeks out of shape. I'm like, 50. so you just telling me I did that for a whole year. I'm like, I've been training. I'm back home working out and stuff like that. When I got there, I thought I was working out. Yeah. So it's got, it pushes you, it, it, it makes you a different person. It, it, it pushes you past your comfort zone. Mm-hmm. You think of high school, you, you, you're working out, but you, and you're trying to be better, but it's, you still get to a level where you, you can, like, it's, you're done when college and you're trying to be the best. It's like there is no stop. It's like you got to push that. It's like even a Rocky movie, there is no tomorrow. Yeah. So it's kind of like that mentality, especially even in the competition because everyone's good So you, and you're trying to get on the field. So for me, even getting there and just being uh, the smaller out of the three backs, but I knew I had different skills in other backs and just trying to compete with them. And for me, just getting there. And I would say after my freshman year, after everything started and just competing with them how it was, I think back just the competition level. I just some some other guys that came from other places. Like I knew I worked out hard, but you could see p- players that came from like places in Maryland stuff like they cut their their work, their work ethic and what they did was different. So I kind of knew I was a little behind. So I knew I had to work a little harder, and especially just getting the books and just just knowing like the whole aspect of it. And when you get there, especially being a scholarship player, you get the meal points and mm-hmm. the girls started coming on campus. So you you got to just try to figure out how to be focused and. It's a different experience, coming, especially coming from South Carolina. You're not really exposed to anything. You're going somewhere. I was 12 hours away from home. I didn't know anyone. Well, I did know Kente and him growing up and in, 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 going to Berkeley and knowing him. So that was good. But just trying to get adjusted was different from not really having somebody tell you and make your schedule every day. So you had to be You had to get up on time. And Joe was... If you if you thirty minutes early, you're on time. If yeah. you fifteen minutes early, you're a little early. But if you on time, you late. So mm-hmm. Joe was that type of person, all about discipline. He made sure he was in class. He would. We got smart. He would start sending people to our class to make sure we went, so we get there, check in, so we were good. And all of a sudden, like you were in the class. Yeah, you were there at the beginning. You were there at the end. So he got smart, started sending people at the <laughs> end to make sure we were check in. Just little things like that. To, mm-hmm. So it makes you grow up fast, especially going from high school. So you see how to really function function as an adult. Yeah. So. Yeah. 
And I, and I saw, like, players that weren't on scholarship, and I know they had a little harder trying to – because even, like, on scholarship, you got your books there for you. You got yep. your classes, everything laid out. <laughs> so everything's pretty much laid out. So you got your meal plans and everything. So I know it was different from – for being a non-scholarship player, so I guess yeah. like a preferred walk on things like that. So how was that experience for you? Yeah, so so my experience was different. So once again, so I came on, uh, you know, and I met with the coaching staff, and you know, I had to work out and mm -hmm. you know earn that spot on the team. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, of course, it, it was a lot of guys out there. It was hot. Um, it was it was a, it was a fight. It was a struggle. Um, but yeah, so coming in, I didn't have the the unlimited meal plan. I didn't you know I didn't have all that stuff. So um, you know those those first that first year for me was uh, was different just coming in. So you know for those of you who don't know everybody doesn't get invited to, to camp. You know coming into the summer, so there's only so many people that can come to camp. So you have to earn that spot to camp. So you know that was one thing coming in that I had to do is you know earn earn that spot to come to camp to even compete for a spot on the team. Um, so so that pause here for a second. How did you, how did, you, did I have like open workouts? So how was that? How was that process to get on yeah. to get in camp? So so they had a they had a tryout, you know, a walk on tryout. Um, so Charlie Strong was there at the time. So you know, me and my dad went up went up to the stadium and took my highlight tape up the tape up there. And we met with the so I played quarterback in high school and then I played DB as well. Um, so we met with Charlie Strong and. He just happened to be in in the in the lobby that day when mm -hmm. we went up there. And he, you know, we went up to the office and talked to him, and you know, they watched my tape and they liked the tape. And you know, my high school team we didn't have a good senior year, um, so you know, but they watched the tape and they liked what they saw. And you know, so they said, you know, if you come out and you show us on field what we see on the film, you know, you'll be okay. You know, mm -hmm. we like what we see. So, um, you know, that's how that process worked. And. You know, it was it was it was tough. You know, I, I don't remember the numbers, but it was it was a lot of guys there that day. And I, I remember I had a wife beat on for the tryout, and when the tryout was over, my my shirt was ripped up. So we, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we were out there, you know, fighting, clawing, and pulling, and you know, people people leaving scratched up and bloody. So. You know, we did a lot of drills. We probably did some stuff we probably shouldn't have do with pads <laughs> on, but but uh, but it, it was uh, it, it was tough, and and you know it all it all paid off. Um, you know, once again, go check out, go check us out on on uh, social media and, and read the bio. So um, I ended up finishing as a two year letterman um, at South Carolina, uh, full scholarship. So Lou Holtz was there when I got there, and uh, Steve Spurrier was there for my uh, for my last two years. Um, but you know that that camp that that summer camp is tough, um, mm -hmm. you know. So to the class of twenty twenty three, so I, I never forget. So after that first that first summer, that next year that freshman camp uh, class came in, and uh, I won't call any names, but um, if he if he's listening, he'll know who he is. But <laughs> we were doing uh, the wave drill with the coaches, you know, where you come up and chop your feet, and they give you one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember they had one of the big industrial fans that you see on the sideline at, at the college games. And uh, it was three of us, and it was I, it was me in the middle, and it was uh, two freshmen on the side. And uh, I remember we went to the left, and we went to the right, and I looked back to the left, and I noticed there was only two people in the drill. <laughs> <laughs> so so one, of the, one of the freshman guys, freshman linebacker on the left-hand side, he went and sat down in front of the fan. <laughs> and, and it was hard on us because the coach was like, well, y'all going to keep going until he comes back in the drill. <laughs> so uh, so my, my advice for, for class of 2023 is just, you know, if you think about walking on to a team or even if you're on a full scholarship, just make sure you're in shape because it's, it's going to be hot. And I know a lot of these guys got these fancy indoor facilities now, and that was indoor. Mm -hmm. So um, just think about that. So we had guys come in from California that couldn't take that South Carolina heat because it's a different type of heat, you know, in, in Columbia, South Carolina. So um, just make sure you're in shape. Uh, keep working out. Make sure you're ready to go. Um, the speed of the game will be different. Uh, so, you know, you, you might have been that guy at, at your high school, but – um, really, the, the biggest transition is just adjusting to the speed of the game. So, um, you know, the game will be a whole lot faster no matter what position you play. Uh, so just be prepared for that. Uh, make sure you're talking to your coaches. Uh, make sure you, you're running, you're doing your workouts. Because um, you got to realize a lot of those guys that the upperclassmen, you know, they went through winter workouts. They went through spring practice. Um, some of you guys might have graduated early and been part of spring practice and getting ready for the season and have an opportunity to play. But... Just make sure you're prepared. Um, it's going to be a grind. It's going to be tough. Um, and, you know, just congratulations to the class of 2023. 
uh, wish you all you all success moving forward um, and once again like I said you know the, the PCP uh, Palmetto Crew Podcast you know we're going to be tracking these guys uh, from Gwinnett County from South Carolina um, you know like I said from youth football all the way up so uh, once again if you follow us on social media um, if, if your your child or even if you as an athlete you know you want to post some highlights you want to shout out or anything that's going on any accomplishments uh, we want to recognize you. We want to we want to point that out on the Palmetto Crew podcast. So anything like that, post it on social media. Um, you know we are here for the people. So this is our platform. Once again, shout out to uh, to Jonathan Allen, Event Stream Sports. Um, so we'll we'll definitely post your content. We'll give you a shout out, and we want to highlight Gwinnett County as well as South Carolina, our roots. So I just want to just finish off by touching on that too. Like the freshman. And the kids coming in, the scholarship, non-scholarship, doesn't matter. You're there to get an education, that's first. And my saying was always use football or any sports you're playing, use it as a vehicle to get you somewhere else because you can't play that sport forever. And my, my thing is being scholarship and having football, that was my only main point when I, when I left. I didn't really know what to fall back on, even though I graduated. And I didn't really focus on anything else but football. And the difference between that and Gerard, he was a walk-on. And football wasn't promised to him, so he, got a, he was an engineer. So he had... He had his plan after football. So I would say just make sure you, you want to play football, make sure, you make sure you have a backup plan, make sure you fall in love with two things instead of one. As people say, if you really don't believe in your, your A plan, you really don't, uh, you shouldn't have a backup plan. I wouldn't say don't go for that. Always have two and three or four plans and anything can always fall through. And just always be prepared and work hard. It's hard work beats talent when talent ain't working hard. Yep, yep. And that brings up a good point too. So, you know, when you, when you go in and, and you're trying to decide what your major is and – you know what you want to take your classes in. Just don't pick something yeah. just to pick it. So you got hours and you are eligible to play football. So yeah. really think about what you want to do. You know what what contribution you want to make to the world. Um, and I will say, when you get to college, everybody hears that speech. Look to the left. Look to the right. One of these people won't be here in four years. That that's the the realest thing you will hear when you get to college. So just make sure that you know being a being a scholarship athlete. You know, you have access to tutoring, you have access to the study hall, to all of that. So definitely take advantage of those opportunities that you have before you. Um, don't take it for granted. Don't waste it. Um, you know, we talked about John Morant, but I also saw a video where there was a young man that's uh, committed to the University of Alabama that got arrested. He was in the backseat crying, and he mm -hmm. was saying, you know, my whole life is over. You know, he he's supposed to go play for Nick Saban, and he, he made a mistake at a young age that – may change the trajectory of his of his future and his path and, and that path that's out here for him and what he was destined to do. So just be smart. Um, you don't know, do anything to jeopardize the opportunities that are in front of you. Um, learn from the mistakes that other people have made and try not to replicate those mistakes. Um, just be, you know, we all do things that, you know, are not, not smart. Uh, we all do immature things. We all have our moments in life, but just make sure that you're respectful. Um, and I always tell, um, shout out to Greg Wright, the high school coach at Timberland High School, my former high school, but we went back and spoke to the youth there. And my thing is, the name on the back of your jersey is just important as the name on the front of your jersey. So think about that legacy you're gonna leave behind and that name on the back of your jersey and what you represent for your family moving forward. So that name on the back of your jersey is gonna be with you from, from here until the day you leave here. So leave a legacy. What is your legacy gonna be? All right, we're gonna, gonna wrap this up. Uh, we'll see y'all next week. Remember to send any questions, any comments, anything. You can find us on Twitter at Palmetto Crew, YouTube at Palmetto Crew. Any uh, emails, anything, just email palmettocrew at gmail.com. Y'all have a good one. See y'all next week. All right. PCP signing off.